I solve question 5b here. So question 5 part b. We want to find out the domain of our inverse. And now let's remember that domain of our inverse equals to the range of our original function. The range of our original function. So if we find out the range of our original function, we find the answer. Now what is our function? Our function was ln of x plus 5 divided by x plus 1 and the domain of our function is from 0 until infinity. Okay, so let's have a look first at the function x plus 5 over x plus 1. Let's deconstruct this a bit. x plus 5 divided by x plus 1. If we write x plus 5 of, as x plus 1 plus 4 divided by x plus 1, well, we could write this as two fractions, x plus 1 over x plus 1 plus 4 divided by x plus 1. And we will see why we do it. It will make it a bit more simple to solve. x plus 1 divided by x plus 1 cancels out and we have just 1 plus 4 divided by x plus 1. Now, this is this is a more simple way to write our function. Okay, and why did we do it? Because look, to, in order to find out the range of the original, remember we want to find out the range of the original, we have to give values into the original function. So we have to give values over here to find out what we get out. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's see. What is 1 plus 4 divided by x plus 1? 1 plus 4 divided by x plus 1. If x increases, so if x increases, we would divide 4 by a large number. We would divide 4 by a large number. Let's say 4 divided by 10, that would be 0 0.4. But what if we divide 4 by 100? That becomes 0 0.04. 4 by 1000, that becomes 0 0.004. So we can see the pattern that this thing decreases. Okay, so what does it matter? Because now, if we have a look at our function, what happens inside the function, we have ln plus 4 divided by x plus 1. So as x increases, 4 divided by x plus 1 becomes a very small number, becomes 0, 0.0 something, Let's just write it 0, 0.00 something. And then we add, add 1 to it and the result, the result becomes 1.000, let's say 0, 01, just as an example. What is a len of 1.0001? Let's write it here in our calculator. Let's see what it means to have a len of a number slightly greater than 1. And intuitively this will also make sense, but let's just start using, give examples ln of 1.0001 equals to 0 0.00009. Let's give a number even even slightly uh, slightly bigger. So 1.000 sorry, a number slightly smaller, which is 1.00001. What would be the result there if we put it into the calculator? It would be seven decimals, so 0 0.123456, 0 point all the way to 9. Why did we do it? Because look at the pattern. If x increases, the number over here decreases more and more. We become, uh, we get a value less and less. If we add 1 to it, it also becomes a very small number, just like in this case and we get closer and closer to zero. Here it was 0 0.0009 and then we get 0 0.000009 so we get closer and closer to zero. We literally approach zero. This is why we did it for. And why does it make sense? Well because ln of 1 is zero. ln of 1 is zero. And when we have ln of a slightly number greater than 1 a number just a bit greater than one like here that's also not far away from zero so this tends towards zero as well and that's indeed what we are proving over here that when our x value increases our function approaches zero and in mathematical terms when we say that x increases we usually note it as when x approaches infinity our value of the function approaches zero okay that's part of our domain 
remember if we look at our domain we can see that the domain ranges from 0 to infinity and we already saw what happens when x approaches infinity but what happens when x actually takes the value of 0 let's plug it over here when x equals to 0 when x equals to 0 our function will have the form of 0 plus 5 divided by 0 plus 1 so that's ln of 5 so the value of the function when x equals to 0 is equal to ln of 5 and from these two parts what can we conclude that the range of the whole function will be from 0 until ln of 5 so the range of the function will be from 0 because the function will approach 0 but will never touch 0 so we keep a round bracket over here until ln of 5 included and it's included because that's literally the value when x actually takes the point 0 and that's part of our domain so it works now what is the range of the original function remember that's what we were looking for that's what our domain where was it it was here in the beginning it was here in the beginning that's the domain of the inverse that's our answer so it means that the domain of our inverse function is from 0 to ln of 5 and that's it we are done